Auction drafts can be a little intimidating if you are not experienced. There are a lot of strategies and nuances that are different from traditional snake drafts. And if you make one big mistake in an auction draft, you're probably not going to be able to recover. But no worries, here are my 10 tips that will help you absolutely crush your auction draft. What's going on fantasy football fans? I'm your host Hussein the Brain and you're watching the couch. If you're new to the channel, want to step up your fantasy football game and win your league, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit that bell notification icon. Let's do a very quick recap on how an auction draft works. Each owner starts with a set amount of fictional money. In most cases, it's usually $200. Each owner takes turns nominating a player to be auctioned off. And that's pretty much how they work. Auction drafts can take quite a bit longer than traditional snake drafts, but can be fun. It's personal preference. If you really want a player, you'll be able to get him in an auction draft, as opposed to a snake draft. If you want a guy who's going number one overall and you have the last pick in a snake draft, boo hoo, you're not gonna be able to get him. So it has its pros and cons. Let's go into my top 10 tips. Tip number one, go into the draft with a predetermined draft strategy, but be prepared to pivot. It's a good idea to have a plan. Now know that that plan is probably gonna change. You can go with studs and busts, which mean you spend a lot on elite players, and then you have a bunch of $1 players on your bench. You can go with more of a balanced approach. I prefer studs and busts because I don't think you're gonna win any league without studs on your team. I want the for sure deal. I want some good RB1s. I want great players. I can find sleepers later on. And of course, there's the waiver wire. If you're in a shallow league, you're going to definitely need to spend up on studs. I repeat that again. If you're in a shallow league, six man, eight man league, spend up on studs. You absolutely need them. Don't worry so much about your remaining money because you'll be able to pick up good players off waivers. Every team is going to be stacked and we all know in a shallow league studs is what absolutely wins it. In a deeper league, you're not going to be able to do this so much. Like in a 16 man league, everybody wants studs. They're a rare commodity. So what you're going to have to do is go with a little bit more balanced approach. Other strategies, maybe you're going in, okay, I'm going to only spend one, two or three dollars on a quarterback. I'm going for more depth at running back as opposed to getting two really good running backs. Tip number two, spend up on one or two studs. This is a general rule as we just talked about it. It can change. So when I go into a league of like 10 men or, or 12 team league doing an auction draft, I typically spend up on two studs. I get myself an elite running back, an elite wide receiver, then I chill out and see what happens. Like I said, this is a general rule. You don't have to follow it to a T or anything like that, but don't spend up on five studs. You'll be completely depleted. And don't wait for all the RB1s, RB2s, wide receiver ones, wide receiver twos to be gone because it'll be too late. Your team will suck. It will have no talent. Tip number three, nominate players you don't want. Really the only time you don't want to do this is if people know you well and they catch on quick. Like we always know this guy nominates players he doesn't want. But most of the time they're not gonna know, especially if it's your first time doing an auction draft. Try to nominate those big name players, maybe players that are older, kind of has-beens, those household names, those popular guys that appear on commercials maybe, but you don't really like, and they'll bid up for them. That's good, deplete your owner's money. Get them to spend up on, on players. Also, another strategy is to nominate players that you know other owners love. Like we have this owner every year in our league, his name is Jerry Jones. Huge Cowboys owner. Go ahead, nominate a Cowboys player. You know he's gonna spend up on a Cowboys player. Or nominate a player like a rookie that came out of a college of someone who's a huge Clemson fan or a huge Alabama fan and you nominate that player from that college. Number four, never nominate your sleepers. There's really no need to nominate a player that's not gonna go for much and super early in the draft. Just don't do it because people might be like, 
oh shoot that is a kind of a sleeper uh huh that might hmm that might be a good pick and then they'll bid up and now that's no longer a sleeper if you're paying a high price for that player number five and this is something that if you played auction drafts before you definitely know and that's to spend all your money if you got even eight bucks remaining, 10 bucks, 12 bucks, 15 bucks remaining. That could have been allocated to get a better player. Basically, you could have got a RB1 instead of an RB2. Spend all your money. Tip number six, pay attention to every owner's roster situation and remaining money. You wanna know if an owner has a lot of running backs or, or not any running backs. Do they have any wide receivers? What are they doing? How much remaining salary do they have? If you know that, then you know you can bid on a player, nominate a player and bid up on them and they don't even have any money to bid. It's very important to pay attention to. Tip number seven, this is a good one. This is sort of a veteran strategy and people that have done auction mocks and auction drafts only a few times or have never done them do not know this. Veteran tip right here. Bid with only a second or two remaining. This will get other owners flustered, right? If someone's clicking seven, eight, nine times really, really fast and you click really fast as well, it's no problem for them to click the 10th time. But if you wait and then you click, they don't know what to think. It gets them a little bit mad. It gets them a little bit off their game. This is a small detail, a small nuance that is not in the snake draft world. Anything you can do to throw your opponents off their game is going to be advantageous. Tip number eight, do not spend more than $1 on a kicker or $1 on a defense. You don't wanna do that, there's absolutely no need. And that brings me to tip number nine. Don't be afraid to nominate a defense or kicker early. It's a win-win situation. I nominate the best kicker, I want him on my team for a dollar. If someone bids him up or maybe other people bid him up, that's a win-win. You just made somebody overpay for the least valuable position. And tip number 10, this one you wanna be very cautious about. So fair warning, bid up on players. Obviously you wanna deplete the money of the other owners, but be very careful when you do this. Here are some specific details on how to do this the right way. First, I would not do this so much on players I hate. If you think that player is gonna kill your team, then don't keep bidding up a player just to piss an owner off or bid him up so he gets to spend more money. Don't do that or, or don't do it too often. Now it is good on just about any player to bid up to a certain amount. Let's say you know a stud wide receiver is gonna go for at least $50, like bare minimum. So it's okay for you to bid 40, 45, maybe all the way up to 47, 48, close to 50. This way, the other owners don't know what players you like or not. If you just never bid on a player, then they know for sure you don't like that player. You see what I mean? But if you made two or three or four bids on that player, uh, decent bids, not like $1, $2, then they don't know for sure because it's a lot to compute when the auction's going on, a lot of things going on so if you bid a little bit they might be like hey this person's interested in this player they will never know what strategy you're going with they'll never know which players you like well that's it for this video leave a comment below let me know if you have any questions about auction drafts or your thoughts about auction drafts i'll be happy to answer them hit the button right here to support me on patreon also subscribe to the youtube channel by hitting the couch icon make sure you guys like the video and i'll see you guys on the next one.